This man never expected that by casually using insecticide to defeat a golden slime, he would set the gears of fate in motion. Kaido started coming to the first level of the underground labyrinth every day with his insecticide, simply because his own strength was too weak to defeat the goblins on the second level. Thus, Kaido became a professional slime slayer, showing no mercy to the slimes. Moreover, every time he killed a slime, he could obtain a crystal. Just by selling these, he could earn a decent income. But what Kaido never expected was that, as an ordinary adventurer, he would also have his day of becoming incredibly lucky. The golden slime he had just killed dropped a high-quality card with the words Valkyrie on it. Summoning her would grant Kaido a god-level servant, but once summoned, the card would lose its value. This made Kaido hesitate. After coming out of the labyrinth, he sold the slime crystals and learned from the buyer that a servant card of the same level as an angel could fetch a billion yen. This left Kaido somewhat dumbfounded, unable to fully grasp the situation. He had never imagined that the card he had picked up could suddenly make him wealthy and elevate his life to its peak. Kaido looked at the card, lost in thought, so much so that on his way home, he kept thinking about the card. When Kaido got home, he heard on the TV broadcast that underground labyrinths had appeared all over the world since 13 years ago. From the initial panic to now, where everyone could venture into the labyrinths, Kaito was one such enthusiast. He had previously gone to the second level with a classmate, but the goblins were too strong, and Kaido nearly got hammered. Therefore, he could only stay on the first level and farm slimes. But now, this card he had found could change his life. Selling the card would get him a billion in cash, but summoning the servant would give him a powerful ally. Kaido was torn, after all. It was a billion yen. The next day, as Kaido was leaving for school, he encountered a girl, and they went to school together. Because the girl was quite attractive, she immediately drew a lot of attention. Seeing this, Kaito slowed down his pace to put some distance between them. But the girl seemed unhappy and slowed down to walk alongside Kaito. Just then, two of Kaido's close friends appeared. Kaido told them not to mention the labyrinth to the girl and to find a reason to brush it off. However, the three of them lacked coordination. One said they were going to the game center. Another said to sing. And another said to go bowling. The girl pouted, looking at Kaido. And without guessing, she knew Kaido had been to the labyrinth again. But after Kaido's repeated explanations, the girl reluctantly believed his fib. Soon, the group arrived at school. Kaido started discussing the rare card with Kei. Since summoning the servant would make it impossible to sell the card, Kaido was torn between choosing a billion yen or a powerful servant. It wasn't until he glanced at the girl's back that Kaido quietly made up his mind. He headed straight to the underground labyrinth, avoiding the surveillance cameras overhead, and went to a corner to begin summoning from the card. Suddenly, a gigantic woman appeared before Kaido's eyes, only to vanish the next second. Then a voice sounded, and a young girl in armor appeared before him. Kaido was incredulous. The girl respectfully introduced herself as Silphy. At that moment, Kaido was at a loss for words. He had expected a statuesque Valkyrie, but instead, a child version had arrived. Fortunately, Silphy was very sensible and possessed excellent scouting abilities. She could sense the slimes around them. Silphy led Kaido to a corner and then took on the nearby slimes as instructed. Despite being a young Valkyrie, her strength was not to be underestimated. With a burst of intense light, Kaido discovered she had a combat power of 170, 17 times his own. At that moment, Silphy became a bit sheepish because she was hungry and wanted to eat the crystal from the slime they had just defeated. Kaito let her eat it, although he felt it was somewhat uneconomical. Once Silphy acted, she needed to replenish her energy which meant there would be no income if they fought all day. Kaito then had Silphy look for slimes while he used insecticide to kill them, ensuring they didn't lose out. Together, they caused ultimate trouble for the slimes on the first level. Soon after, Kaito left the labyrinth with today's earnings being 15,000 yen, more than 10 times his usual amount. With Silphy, the Valkyrie by his side, Kaito had nothing to worry about. Previously too weak to defeat the goblins, now with Silphy's help, he could finally challenge the second level of the labyrinth. Later, Silphy could never have imagined that her master was such a strong man. With only his gear, he could exchange blows with the goblins. Although she could kill a goblin with just one skill, Kaido enjoyed the fight. Previously, he had been beaten by goblins, 
and was still quite fearful of them. To regain his reputation, Kaido directly challenged a goblin to a one-on-one -on -one duel. Of course, if he couldn't handle it, he would need Silphie's help, which left the goblin speechless. In the ensuing battle, the goblin was accidentally killed by Kaido, becoming a ghost under his stick. Kaido burst into tears upon seeing this, finally avenging the past beating. Silphie watched, bewildered, as the subsequent battles were all handled by her. Kaito's efficiency was too slow. Silphie only needed to activate her built-in skills to defeat the goblins. This time, Kaito's haul included four goblin crystals, which surprised the buyer. She hadn't expected someone who usually hunted slime to venture to the second level of the labyrinth and even defeat goblins. In the following days, Kaito fed Silphie while farming goblins. His level soared dramatically, reaching level 10. Even his wooden stick was upgraded to an iron rod and he received a divine blessing. With this blessing, Kaido's attributes increased significantly, and each level up significantly boosted his stats. Seeing this passive ability, Kaido kneeled before Silphie without a second thought. If this was the work of a god, only the young Valkyrie by his side could have made it happen. Silphie was a bit dumbfounded, and before she could speak, Kaido grabbed her little hand. Although she was a young Valkyrie, the blessings she bestowed were genuinely powerful. Silphie also sighed, feeling fortunate to have such a master. The two then resumed fighting. Suddenly a skeleton emitting a white light appeared before them, a rare monster. With Silphie's help, Kato successfully defeated the skeleton, though his role was merely supportive. The young Valkyrie handled all the offense. Silphie was a bit hungry by then, so she ate the red crystal they obtained, which tasted quite good. After leaving the labyrinth, Kato learned from the buyer that both the red crystal and the white light skeleton were rare items, worth 2 million yen each. Kaido's eyes dimmed. 2 million yen gone just like that, eaten up with no way to recover it. He could only feel the pinch of losing 2 million yen as he lay in bed back home, thinking about the third level of the labyrinth. Since this level harbored multiple monsters, Kaido worried about being a drag on Silphie, so he decided to fight alone in the upcoming battles. This made Silphie anxious. She thought Kaido didn't want her anymore. Kaido quickly explained, easing her worries. Silphie expressed that she would never see her master as a burden, but rather thought highly of him. With an unmatched appetite, Kaido faced a brutal beating from the goblins. The buyer, seeing Kaido's battered state, couldn't help but advise him to be careful. Kaido could only offer an awkward smile. After getting beaten up, Kaido began spending heavily on potions and gear to stand a chance against the goblins. Thus, Kaido returned to the first level of the labyrinth, where he found slimes easier to deal with. Using insecticide, he massacred the slimes until Silphie sensed a rare one, a silver slime. Kaido made a move to kill it, and in the next second, Silphie used her skill to finish it off, obtaining another servant card that listed a Viscount-level demon. Kaido was elated and immediately summoned it. Now having both a Valkyrie and a demon, he was on the verge of reaching the pinnacle of his life. However, the summoned character turned out to be yet another little girl. The boy never expected that the succubus familiar he spent 10 billion to purchase would turn out to be a little lowly demon when summoned. He had hoped for a sweet duo with a big sister type, but his dream was completely shattered. To his dismay, the demon Lucaria was a sundere with a sharp tongue, criticizing Kaido for being dumb and unreliable right from their first meeting. Even the little lowly couldn't stand watching this. After all, Kaido was her new master. But Luceria told them not to mind her words, as this was just the nature of demons, and she meant no harm. Hearing this, the little lowly lowered her guard. Later, to test Luceria's strength, Kaido summoned a slime. Unexpectedly, Luceria's fire cannon caused a huge explosion, proving her combat value of 130. However, Luceria turned out to be a glutton. After the little lowly unleashed a powerful move, a single magic core should have sufficed. But after eating one, she continued to ask Kaido for more. Not only did Kaito not make any money, but he also had to keep spending more. Thinking about this made Kaito feel a tremendous loss, and Luceria even mocked him for being a stingy master. Eventually, Kaido decided to take Luceria to the second level and let her use another skill, corrosive breath. Partly to see the effect of the skill, and partly because goblins were worth much more than slimes, minimizing his losses. The skill was terrifying, and even just watching it felt chilling. 
The loot was easily secured, and now with protectors by his side, Kaido finally dared to enter the third level of the dungeon, where most monsters appeared in pairs. He even bought a new weapon. Upon encountering a monster, he intended to take one down first, but his shot went awry. The monster charged at him but, fortunately, in a critical moment, the little lowly deployed a barrier, followed by Luceria's cooperative attack, securing their loot. Luceria always complained that what was given to her was not enough, and if she continued to eat like this, all the day's efforts would be wasted. She even harshly threatened to send Kaito to hell, which worried Silphy the onlooker. Although the battles had become much easier, Kaido's income hadn't increased much. After each battle, he had to feed both the little lowly and Luceria, and as the little lowly's level increased, so did her appetite. Thus, to avoid wasting effort, Kaito had no choice but to return to the first level to farm slimes. This move baffled the receptionist. Given the loot Kaido had previously brought back, he should have had enough strength to advance to the fourth level, but instead, he returned to the weakest level. Kaido, of course, didn't dare mention his reliance on leg pulling, and instead claimed it was a return to basics. However, to go to the fourth level, his current equipment was still lacking. His only choice was to farm more slimes. The next day, he found a special slime. To ensure nothing went wrong, he had his protectors take action. They quickly surrounded the slime, taking turns attacking it. Although this time it didn't drop the servant card Kaido had hoped for, he did obtain a magic orb. Dreaming of becoming a magician, Kaito decisively used the orb and immediately learned a water-based magic spell. He couldn't wait to test its power, but the result was disappointing. The water ball had no effect on the monsters. In the end, Luceria had to take action. Kaido was puzzled, but Silphy comforted him thoughtfully. Luceria also reminded him that at least he now always had water to drink. Hearing this, Kaido regretted not selling the orb earlier. The boy never expected that the Valkyrie's retinue he acquired accidentally possessed the power to annihilate both heaven and air in an instant. Later, Kaido obtained a water magic spell. Although the power it released was almost negligible, the upside was that he would never have to worry about drinking water again. Moreover, Kaido discovered another use for it. By changing the shape of the water ball, he could block the mouth and nose, causing monsters to suffocate to death. Unfortunately, the monsters killed on the third level could hardly boost Kaido's level any further. Thus, he decided to proceed to the fourth level. He specifically purchased the battle suit he had been longing for, which would protect him from being pierced by sharp objects, and also came with a bracelet that enhanced magic power. However, this battle suit did not support trying on before purchase. Its authenticity could only be proven in actual combat. Upon hearing this, Luceria realized that Kaido was not reliable. It seemed that the performance on the fourth level would depend on her and Silphy. Unlike the first three levels, this place was filled with green plants. As soon as Silphy entered, she sensed an ominous presence. The next second, a giant cockroach appeared, and the frightened pair bombarded it. By the time Kaido realized what was happening, they had already breached the fourth level. He barely caught up with the two, almost getting mistakenly killed in the process. Seeing it was Kaido, Silphy burst into tears. Although she was scared, she apologized to Kaido. As his servant, she should not have run away and left her master behind. Unlike her Sundere demon companion, she wouldn't admit she was scared of bugs. However, thanks to their rampage, Kaido managed to pick up quite a few magic cores along the way, though they tasted exceptionally awful. Now that they had reached the fifth level, Kaido naturally started exploring. Soon they encountered two monsters, but unfortunately, Kaido's physical attacks were ineffective against them. In the end, they needed Silphy to set up a barrier, and then Luceria to coordinate the attack. Although they successfully killed the monsters, it meant that Luceria would have to take action in future encounters. The two, however, scoffed at Kato's spoils of the day. Kato had no choice but to opt for another fight next time. However, on their way back, they didn't expect Silphy to be staring blankly at a wall. Upon inquiry, she revealed that she sensed an unusual magic power from the wall. When asked, Luceria felt nothing, and Kaido's investigation also found nothing special. Then, Silphy directly unleashed a divine thunderstrike, blasting through the wall. Seeing this, Kaido panicked, worrying that he might be accused of damaging public property. Yet the allure of the unknown always piqued curiosity, so the three of them walked inside. 
But Kaido knew well that such situations usually come with dangers. Just as he was about to remind the others, Luceria stepped on a trap. Even more absurd was that the dark arrows were actually shot at him. Fortunately, the protective suit indeed proved its worth, thus saving Kaido's life. However, the pain was unavoidable, prompting Kaido to once again remind them to be more careful. In the next moment, Luceria stepped on another trap, resulting in Kaido being attacked again. Fortunately, the protective suit proved effective, allowing them to get through the ordeal unharmed. Soon, the trio reached the room of the boss, but it appeared that a special item was needed to open the door. Silphy then blew the door open with a reverse strike. As they approached, they saw two unique monsters that even the system couldn't identify their attributes. With no other option, they had to face the challenge head-on. Kaido instructed them to first deal with the ogre. The two launched a combined attack on the monster, causing a massive explosion. However, to their surprise, their combined attack didn't harm the ogre at all. Kaido guessed that their skills might be ineffective against it. Fortunately, Silphy's barrier was still able to block the attacks. He then assigned tasks to the two. Luceria was to take on the giant slime while Silphy stayed back to cover him. Since magic was ineffective, it meant that his bow and arrows would finally be of use. Indeed, physical attacks were effective against the ogre. Kaido aimed for its vital points, and although the impact was significant, he hadn't bought many arrows to save money and quickly ran out. Left with no other choice, Kaido placed his hopes on his water magic. With the bracelet's enhancement, the water solidified into ice, which also proved effective against the ogre. Kaido then transformed it into a massive ice arrow, and after three consecutive shots to the head, the ogre finally fell. Meanwhile, Luceria wasn't faring as well, because the slime's soft body kept bouncing off her attacks. Seeing this, Kaido suggested that he would handle the defense, while Silphy used a new skill she learned from an upgrade to launch the attack. At the critical moment, they managed to repel the slime. However, Silphy's strike didn't completely kill the slime. In the end, it was up to Kaido, the slime killer, who knew that insecticide was a slime's natural enemy. Without hesitation, he took out the Deluxe Pack and under a double spray, the slime's health rapidly decreased and it soon fell. This victory made the two girls joyfully embrace Kaito. At this moment, Luxeria's level increased and Kaito's level also rose significantly. Afterwards, he found a rare red magic core that the ogre had dropped, which might fetch a good price based on past experiences. As for the slime, it dropped a rare magic sword for Kaido, though it didn't look very impressive. The man received a magical sword that appeared to be nothing more than a small knife used for cutting steak. However, its attack power depended entirely on his imagination. The stronger his imagination, the more powerful the knife's attack would be. An iron golem which no one could breach was easily pierced when he silently wished in his heart that he could do so. In the next moment, not only did he actually pierce the golem as seen in animations, but when he imagined it splitting into pieces, his wish incredibly came true. This unbelievable scene left his teammates in shock. Just a short while ago, they had thought Kaido was just a novice. After all, for the past year or two, he had only been fighting slimes on the first level of the labyrinth, which hardly indicated any significant skill. But they had to form a team due to an official organization's activity that required a party of four or more. This time, the activity wasn't on the first level, but deeper, on the seventh level. They told Kaido that he just needed to protect himself, which he was happy to comply with, believing that his two major servants could easily kill any creature from the seventh level with one blow. However, there was a problem. If people knew he could summon both angelic and demonic beings of godlike power, the consequences would be obvious. As he was thinking about this, they encountered a monster. However, seeing that it was just an ordinary rock golem, they breathed a sigh of relief. The team leader, Aerie, immediately declared she could handle it alone. She wasn't boasting. The fight didn't even last five seconds. Catching a flaw, she killed the golem with a single strike. Just as Kaido was impressed by her skills, a more powerful bronze golem suddenly appeared. Seeing this, Irie didn't hesitate and immediately had her two teammates use their skills to cover her. Hikari, the team's mage, used a mud spell to restrain the golem, while Mirai summoned her servant, a jewel beast adept in wind magic. Not only was it agile, but the power of its moves was formidable. 
Ari launched her final strike, which, like before, only took one hit to completely deplete the bronze golem's health bar. Kaido felt quite at ease, thinking he wouldn't need to lift a finger today. However, he suddenly noticed that a monster was stealthily approaching the two women. Seeing that it was an iron golem, he tried to interfere, but to his surprise, his crossbow attacks couldn't breach its defenses. After all, it was his first encounter with such a monster. Fortunately, at this critical moment, Ayuri arrived in time to shield the two women from danger. However, her expression was no longer as composed as before because the Iron Golem was the strongest monster on the seventh level. She immediately asked her teammates to provide magical support. Surprisingly, neither fire nor wind magic had any effect on it. Seeing that everyone was powerless, Kaido considered whether to summon his two major servants. However, he accidentally touched a small knife, which he suddenly remembered was the magical sword he had obtained not long ago. According to the official information, it could inflict damage as imagined during an attack. Although Kaido found it hard to believe, since it looked just like a small knife used for cutting steak, he decided to give it a try. After having the magic user Hikari create a distraction, he immediately imagined in his mind and launched an attack. Kaito silently wished, let the monster shatter. To everyone's surprise, the next second, the monster actually disappeared completely. Seeing this incredible scene stunned everyone, and they immediately asked Kato about the origin of his weapon. Upon learning that it was a magical sword from a hidden labyrinth, all three women were very envious. Afterward, they drastically changed their previous disdainful attitude, and even asked Kato if he wanted to join their team, considering that he had been alone until now. While the request from the three beautiful women was hard for Kato to refuse, thinking of his two major servants, he quickly sobered up. He politely said he would think about it and then bid farewell to the three women. But he turned back to the labyrinth. He wanted to know what his two major servants thought about having three attractive older sisters around. However, the expressions of the two women said it all. Not only did Luceria bluntly curse, but even the usually docile Sylphie couldn't help herself. They both agreed that things were already good as they were, and there was no need to add new members. Seeing their Sundre expressions, Kaido wondered if they were jealous. The girl could never have imagined that the poor boy in their group, who didn't even have decent equipment, would, at a critical moment, effortlessly pull out two servant cards of divine spirits, each worth hundreds of millions. The wealthy young lady in the team had spent a fortune at an auction to buy just one demon fox servant. Yet, Kaito had both an angel and a demon at his disposal. They appeared and instantly defeated the giant water monster that was about to wipe out the entire team. However, because his guardians were so powerful, Kaido feared he would hold them back, which sparked the idea of teaming up with others to improve his own strength. Luceria thought Kaido was too attached to the magic core and wanted to send him straight to hell, which frightened Kaido so much that he quickly declared he would no longer form a team, and he would still provide the magic core. The considerate Sylphie expressed her support for Kato, and upon learning the reason for his teaming up with others, both of them were delighted and began to encourage Kato to do his best. Kato promised to only team up with others on weekends, spending the rest of his time with the two of them. That evening, Kaito called Ari to arrange the time, and they once again went to the seventh level. With the experience from last time, this time Kaito fixed a water orb onto his magic sword turning it into a very sharp ice magic sword that could instantly kill the tough stone men. But it was the first time Kaido fought high-level monsters using his own strength, and soon his stomach started growling. So they started cooking right there. Unexpectedly, the three girls pulled out a luxurious meal from their magic pouches. Seeing this, Kaido was truly impressed. If they were this lavish outdoors, he could hardly imagine how luxurious they must be at home. After completing the exploration of the seventh level, the next day they stepped into the eighth level. Since most of the creatures here were aquatic, Kaito specifically bought a life jacket. Hikari realized that Kaito was a landlubber, but Kaito insisted, claiming it was not just any life jacket but a limited edition suit highly resistant to magical attacks. However, he was quickly proven wrong when a monster's spit melted the life jacket, and in the fight, Kaito's inability to handle water was fully exposed. Even though the water was not as high as his knees, he was frantically calling for help. Then, many flying fish emerged from the water, 
so Kaito used his magic sword and water magic to transform it into a large cleaver. With this weapon, fighting the monsters became much easier. But Kaido, not paying attention, exhausted all his energy. However, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise as he experienced being embraced by a beauty. When he woke up, Kaido found himself fully recharged. Only then did he learn that during his unconsciousness, Hikari had fed him a bottle of recovery potion. Although the potion was expensive, Hikari didn't mind. She believed that helping each other in the same team was a matter of course. Besides, they had just defeated many monsters, which was a great harvest. However, at that moment, Miku's servant suddenly sensed something unusual. The next second, a giant water monster emerged from the water. But it was strange. Such a monster should have appeared in a lower level. Realizing they were no match for the monster, they promptly decided to retreat. However, the monster didn't give them a chance. Using its huge body, it shook the ground and blocked the exit. With no other choice, they had to face it head on. Kaido planned for the three of them to draw its attention while Eri attacked. However, Miku's magic and servant's attacks had no effect. Although Kaido's magic sword could easily pierce through the body and cause the explosive damage he envisioned, the damage was minimal due to the level difference. Even when Eri successfully ambushed its head, it didn't cause a fatal injury, and she was thrown away. Seeing that they might be wiped out if they delayed any longer, Kaido had no choice but to summon his guardians. The two servants cast spells simultaneously, and with a dazzling light, they killed the monster in one strike. Kaido thought this might set off conflicts within his group. But surprisingly, the two girls adored the guardians. Hikari particularly liked Luceria, with her striking black hair, and even wanted to touch it. Initially resistant, Luceria couldn't withstand Hikari's cutesy pleading. Unlike their excitement, Ayuri appeared quite reserved, but that was only on the surface. As a gesture of friendship, they planned to take the two to a bathhouse. Once there, Ayuri couldn't hold back her praises, calling the two very cute. Next door, Kaido was directly amused by their banter. The girl never imagined that she would wake up to find herself with three love rivals. It turns out Kaito had always been saving girls inadvertently, quietly capturing their hearts. Even the steadfast Ayuri couldn't resist falling for him. After discovering this, Kaito's Haruka became jealous. Recently, Kaito had brought Haruka to visit the university, and on the train ride, they met two of his good friends. Upon entering the campus, Haruka noticed the cherry trees everywhere, while Kaito immediately got lost in his daydreams, even beginning to imagine frolicking with a goddess in the future. It took a reminder from someone nearby to snap Kaito back to reality. To control his wandering thoughts, Kaito even slapped himself a few times. By the time they reached the reception, Kaito's cheeks were swollen like a pig's head. Hayato, seeing this, was overjoyed. Watching the two, Ayuri assumed Haruka was Kaido's girlfriend, but Kaido immediately denied it, saying they were just childhood friends, which somewhat relieved Eri. When they learned Eri was Kaido's teammate, they were both very envious and regretted not continuing as explorers. They also warned Kaito to keep a proper distance from Eri, otherwise Haruka would get jealous. While everyone was resting, Hayato and Shinji couldn't stop praising the surroundings. Kaito secretly resolved to attend school here with Haruka. If he could have afternoon tea here with the goddess, it would be a meaningful experience. While Kaito was daydreaming, Hikari and Miku found him. Before Kaito could introduce them, Shinji and Hayato introduced themselves first. When Miku saw Haruka, she too thought she was Kaito's girlfriend, and Kaito again denied it without hesitation, which displeased Haruka. Hikari and Miku, however, were relieved. Just then, Haruka also asked them how they knew Kaito, making Kaito sweat profusely. Before Kaito could defend himself, Miku revealed the whole story. Seeing Kaito's pale face, they quickly showed concern. Just then, Airi also arrived, and the scene became awkward. Kaito had entered a battlefield. They then went for a meal together to share their feelings. Seeing such a free-spirited life made everyone yearn for university life. After everyone had their fill, they returned to the school and soon arrived at the swimming pool. Seeing the pool reminded Kaito of a childhood drowning incident. If not for Haruka, Kaito might have died. Even when chased by a stray dog, Haruka stepped up to help. Watching Haruka and Kaito getting along so well made Hikari and Miku nervous. They soon left the swimming pool, 
and as they were descending the stairs, Hikari, distracted by Kaido, didn't watch her step and suddenly fell. Kaido quickly caught her in a princess carry, instantly winning Hikari over. Watching Kaido's reflexes, the goddess and his buddies were shocked. They didn't know that Kaido had slowly honed these skills in the maze. Seeing the two in an embrace, Miku couldn't hold back and loudly yelled at them to separate. Just then, a soccer ball flew from the field, heading straight for Miku's face. At the critical moment, Kaido performed a spectacular bicycle kick, saving Miku and skillfully kicking the ball into the goal. This incredible move stunned everyone present. Without a doubt, Miku was smitten at that moment. Meanwhile, Eri, although appearing calm, was inwardly very jealous. To maintain control over herself, Eri invited everyone to visit the dojo and even performed a scythe demonstration. After the performance, hearing Kaido praise her, Eri couldn't help but blush unexpectedly, realizing she had also fallen for Kaido. Observing the expressions of the three, Haruka seemed to understand everything. When saying goodbye, the happiest were Shinji and Hayato. Watching Kaito walk away, Eri and the others felt an inexplicable sense of loss. While Kaido was walking Haruka home, she suddenly asked him which type of girl among the three he liked. Kaido honestly replied that he hadn't thought about it, as he already had a crush on someone else. After a brief farewell, she angrily slammed the door, leaving Kaido stunned outside. After some reflection, Kaido realized Haruka might be jealous, but he dismissed the thought in just two seconds, knowing himself well enough to doubt that a goddess would be jealous over him. The boy never expected that his ordinary Luceria could transform into the charming succubus sister he always dreamed about. It turns out that once Luceria activates her gluttony skill, she can consume the life force of her contractor to restore her true form and significantly enhance her strength. The magic she casually releases is of a god-destroying level. Not long ago, Luceria helped Kaido kill a colorful slime, and they obtained a magical glove that could unleash invisible force by consuming magical power. Essentially, it allowed for striking from a distance. However, with Kaido's limited magical power, the glove didn't show much effect, but combined with a magic sword, it could produce more varieties of attacks. At that moment, the trio came to invite Kaido to challenge the ninth level. During their conversation, they ignored the Guardians following them, which left the Guardians fuming. Yet this was also somewhat endearing. While exploring, Sylphie sensed a powerful enemy ahead. With no other paths available, they decided to flee if they couldn't handle the fight. Soon, they encountered a giant two-headed dog, which was strange as such a high-level monster shouldn't appear on the ninth level. Realizing the monster was formidable, they discussed returning to the surface, but the monster noticed them at that moment. Sylphie immediately deployed a barrier to protect everyone, then Hikari used magic to restrict the monster's movements, and finally Luceria attacked with an explosive flame. However, after the attack, they realized the two-headed dog had a high resistance to fire. The powerful move didn't cause much damage. Although the dog's flames couldn't hurt them, the barrier couldn't withstand the high temperature. Kaido then decided to risk himself as bait, allowing Luceria to attack from the belly, but her solo output was clearly not enough. So then, Kaito had Silphy use her divine spear to coordinate their attack. He quickly reacted by using a water orb to block the monster's mouth. Then the three girls took the opportunity to swarm in. With everyone's consecutive attacks, the monster could not withstand and fell. But just as they were celebrating their victory, another voice sounded. It came from a creature of the same species as Luceria, which surprised the group. They had not expected a demon to appear in the shallower levels. It turned out that the double-headed dog was controlled by this demon. Suddenly the demon launched an attack, but Silphie's protective barrier successfully blocked it. Together, Everyone counterattacked, but couldn't inflict any damage. They had thought that having the Guardians combine their powers might break through the defense, but their combo moves were ineffective. When the smoke cleared, the demon charged directly at Kaido. Luckily, Eri blocked the sudden assault, delaying it for just two and a half seconds, but it gave Kaido enough time to react. When the next attack came, he quickly drew his magic sword to defend. Unexpectedly, it caused the opponent's sword to shatter. However, Kaido was still knocked down by the demon's punch. The two servants immediately launched a counterattack. While the demon's attention was drawn by the others, 
Kaido stealthily moved behind and stabbed at its waist. He thought he had finally defeated the opponent, but unexpectedly, the demon possessed a healing magic. Seeing that no one was a match for the demon, Kaido realized Luceria's gluttony skill could temporarily increase their power by consuming the life force of the contractor. At this point, Kaido no longer cared about his own life. Using the skill was the only chance to win. Initially, the demon didn't take the enlarged Luceria seriously, but after one attack, there was smoke but no damage. The next second, the demon was annihilated. Unfortunately, once the gluttony was deactivated, she reverted to a childlike form. Luckily, Kaido had gained a significant level increase and even acquired a new skill called Pain Tolerance, allowing him to maintain his transformed state for longer. They also reaped substantial rewards from this adventure. Not only did the double-headed dog drop a giant magic core, but the demon also turned into a servant card. Since Kaito ultimately defeated the demon, the ownership was given to him. Considering it was the same demon series as Luceria, Kaido hesitated whether to keep it. Luceria mentioned that it was a lower-tier demon and suggested selling it. The more she urged Kaito to sell it, the more he wanted to keep it. So, he decisively performed the summoning, only to summon another child. Kaito regretted it, claiming he would sell it, but unfortunately, there is no cure for regret. Whoever summons it, it becomes their servant, and others can't use the card even if they obtain it. Fortunately, the magic core was extremely valuable. The guild's purchase price was a whopping 24 million. The three wealthy girls didn't care much and would have been fine giving it all to Kaido, but he insisted on dividing it into four parts. Others might struggle through the maze, but he could pass it by just lying down, especially after obtaining two guardians and a new small knight, Berulia, who could both tank and strike. From then on, he no longer needed to take action himself. To test Berulia's strength, Kaito handed him a crowbar. Although it wasn't as handy as a sword, being a knight, he easily handled a few goblins with it. His exquisite skills impressed Kaido, who exclaimed in admiration, realizing Berulia was much more skilled than himself. However, Luceria felt he had become more sluggish due to being reduced to level 1, which prevented him from performing at his full strength. Kaito then began to exhaust himself physically, wanting to test Berulia's dark healing skill. Unfortunately, it only restored a small amount of health. Berulia explained that dark healing was an emergency skill primarily used for treating wounds and preventing death rather than fully restoring health. Originally, Kaido thought if it could restore health, it would allow Luceria to continuously drain his life to maintain her mature form. This dream was now shattered. Afterward, the party reached the seventh level. Having leveled up significantly, each of them had acquired new skills. Hikari learned an ice magic spell that could perfectly control a monster's movements. Airi mastered a slicing technique that could easily bisect a bronze beast, but the considerable power came at a high magical cost, making Airi hesitant to use it frequently. Miku learned an illusion spell that, combined with her fox skills in a combo, maximized efficiency. Finally, to test Silphie's new skill strength, they specifically targeted three mutated goblins. They chose three because Silphie's new skill, Maiden's Battle Song, enhanced the team's strength. With the protection of the Valkyrie's song, Kaido felt a continuous surge of power. To him, the monster's speed seemed like slow motion, allowing him to easily dodge their attacks and counterattack. The other two felt the same effect, though they didn't need enhancement to defeat the monsters quickly, and Berulia didn't feel much stronger, leading Miku to guess that the effect might depend on trust levels. Encouraged by everyone, Berulia vowed to train harder in swordsmanship, mentioning that having a real sword would be even better. Hearing this, Kaido decisively went to the store to buy one. Touched by his master's gift, Berulia was moved to tears and immediately wanted to perform in front of everyone. Indeed, with the sword, he was even more adept, handling several monsters with ease. His superior swordsmanship earned Kaido's admiration, and Kaito even considered asking Berulia to teach him. Despite his desire to learn swordsmanship, Kaido had to go home early today because he was supposed to study at Airi's house the next day. Hearing that Kaido was leaving early, the Guardian's demeanor instantly changed. The next morning, Kaito and his classmates arrived at Airi's house, but the large estate made them think they were at the wrong place. Just then, 
two luxury cars arrived, carrying Hikari and Miku. Pushing open the gate, they were even more surprised. They hadn't expected needing a car to reach Aerie's residence, and the transportation was exclusively for the girls, leaving the boys to walk. Aerie's home turned out to be a historic martial arts dojo. The estate was equipped with various facilities for training skills. By the time Kaido and his friends arrived, the group went straight to the dojo. Aerie planned to hold a study session there because if anyone lost focus, not only could they be cut down on the spot, they could also cool off under the waterfall at the back. However, the planned study session didn't quite go as expected. They barely got any reading done and soon left to play around. The group meditated under the waterfall, and by the weekend, they returned to the labyrinth. With everyone having gained new skills and boosted by Sylphie's Valkyrie enhancement, navigating the ninth level felt much easier, which greatly boosted their confidence. They decided to go all out and tackle the tenth level. However, just at the entrance, an unexpected event occurred. Hikari suddenly collapsed without any warning. The boy never expected that the master had merely fainted accidentally. As a result, Luceria started furiously slapping him, and that wasn't the end of it. Seeing this, a little angel nearby began administering mouth-to-mouth -mouth medication. Even more outrageous was that after seeing Luceria join in, the boy also wanted to try mouth-to-mouth -mouth medication. Ever since Hikari fainted in the dungeon, it was only then that they discovered she had a terminal illness, with all her organs gradually failing and difficult to cure with the current medical standards. However, they also accidentally learned that a rare panacea that could cure all diseases dropped in the labyrinth. Although it had only appeared once on the market, it was still the only chance to save Kaito. Thus, Kaito and his companions began exploring the tenth level of the labyrinth, a desert area. Although there was no sun in the labyrinth, the temperature here was much hotter than other areas. Unfortunately, they didn't find what they were looking for on this level as it was an extremely rare item that they knew wouldn't be easy to find. One day, they encountered a hidden boss in the labyrinth. With Sylphie's blessing, everyone's attributes increased, and they all rushed in, unleashing a furious assault on the lion. In the end, Kaito used his magic sword to disintegrate its body. Although Kaito and his two companions gained a lot of experience, the only thing that dropped was a slightly larger magic core. Fortunately, by continuing forward, they could reach a deeper teleportation point where the items dropped would be better. To help Kaido, he almost went to explore the labyrinth every day. This time, without his two teammates, he entered the twelfth level alone. Berulia wanted Kaido to rest for a day, but Kaido said he wouldn't go too deep, just to check out the situation on the twelfth level and would leave immediately if it was dangerous. After hearing this, the three could not say much but continued to accompany their master in exploring. This level was covered in ice and snow, and Kaido regretted entering almost immediately as it clearly required better equipment. But Kaito, with his extraordinary luck, never had a moment's peace wherever he went. Before he could even think of retreating, an emergency occurred. A horde of demons crazily charged at them. Seeing this, Kaido asked Sylphie to activate a barrier, and then they quickly fled. However, the demons persistently chased after them, impossible to shake off. With no other choice, he had to switch from defense to offense. Luceria too was forced to attack, but it was ineffective. Helplessly, everyone had to join in. Loot continuously dropped as they fought, and both protectors gained enhancements. Just then, unexpectedly, Kaido slipped and was caught off guard by a sudden boar charge, plunging him into the midst of the swarm. His health rapidly declined. Fortunately, Berulia desperately fought a path through and rescued Kaido planning to flee with him first while the protectors stayed behind to cover their retreat. This was a good opportunity to test the new skills they had acquired after leveling up. Thus, Sylphie and Luceria began casting spells, successfully repelling them with the goddess's judgment and the passion of purgatory. Once they reached safety, Berulia frantically used dark healing, but even as her mana ran out, Kaido didn't wake up. Luceria, seeing this, slapped him several times trying to force him awake. Unfortunately, the rough method didn't work. Luckily, in the end, the two frantically fed him medicine and finally managed to bring Kaito back. Seeing their master awake, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. However, the next second, he fainted again due to weakness.